For years, smart glasses either did too little to matter or too much to be wearable. Some acted like notification mirrors. Others tried to be full AR computers strapped to your face. And most people just didn't see a reason to wear them all day. You should also know that social friction played a big role too. If something looks strange, bulky, or distracting, people won't adopt it. And literally, no amount of tech magic fixes that. That's where Google's thinking has shifted. Instead of asking how powerful smart glasses can be, the real question became, why would you actually want to wear them? Basically, if glasses don't feel normal and don't help you in small, everyday moments, they fail every single time. And this thing is exactly the problem Project Aura is designed to solve. Project Aura explained in plain terms. So let's clear something up right away. Project Aura is not a consumer gadget you can go buy. And it's not a flashy concept demo either. This thing is a reference design for smart glasses built around Android XR, created by Google in partnership with Xreal. That matters a lot, because instead of Google saying, here's our glasses, buy them, they're saying, here's how smart glasses should work. Hardware makers can then build on top of this foundation. That's classic Google. Same playbook as Android phones, Android Auto, and Wear OS. And Aura sits in a very specific category. These are see-through glasses designed for everyday use, not sealed off headsets. You're still looking at the real world. Digital info just layers on top when you need it. Directions, translations, contextual help, stuff that's actually useful. And no, this isn't Google Glass 2.0. That product tried to jump straight to the future before the tech and the culture were ready. Aura is doing the opposite. And once you understand that, everything else starts to click. Why Google partnered instead of building everything in-house. Now here's the really smart part. Google didn't try to do this alone. Instead, they partnered with Xreal, a company that already specializes in lightweight optical systems and see-through displays. And that decision alone tells you how serious this is. Google focused on the software platform and AI foundation. Xreal handled the optics and form factor. You should also know this isn't about cutting corners. It's about speed and specialization. Building comfortable, transparent smart glasses is insanely hard. Xreal has years of experience there. Google knows that trying to rebuild all of that from scratch would slow everything down. And this approach mirrors how Android took over phones. Google didn't make every device. They made the system everyone else could build on. And Aura follows the same logic. Get the foundation right, let partners iterate fast, and let the ecosystem scale. And that's the quiet shift happening here. Google isn't chasing a single breakout product. They're setting rules for the category. And once you see Aura that way, it stops looking like just another smart glasses project and starts looking like infrastructure. The hardware philosophy behind Aura. Now let's talk about the physical side, because this is where smart glasses usually mess things up. Project Aura isn't trying to look futuristic, and that's very much on purpose. These are see-through glasses designed to be worn like normal eyewear, not headsets you tolerate for 20 minutes and then rip off. You're still looking at the real world the whole time. No tunnel vision, no sealed displays, and no blocking your surroundings. This thing is lightweight by design. The optics are transparent. The goal isn't immersion. The goal is presence. Basically, Google doesn't want you feeling like you stepped into a computer. They want the computer to quietly sit on top of your reality and only speak when needed. And that design choice matters more than specs ever could. Because the moment glasses feel heavy, bulky, or visually loud, people stop wearing them. You should also know that earlier previews show Aura leaning into minimalism. No giant visors, no weird protrusions, just a clean glasses first approach. And that's the big shift. Aura treats hardware like a vessel, not the star of the show. The glasses exist to get out of the way, literally. And once you get that, the rest of the strategy makes way more sense. Android XR is the real product here. Here's the part most people miss. Project Aura isn't the main product. Android XR is. Aura is basically a doorway into a larger platform Google is building for glasses, headsets, and future XR devices. And this is where Google's experience really kicks in. They've done this before. Phones weren't the win. Android was. Cars weren't the win. Android Auto was. Watches weren't the win. Wear OS was. 
same idea here. Android XR is designed to let developers build once and deploy across multiple types of XR hardware, glasses, headsets, whatever comes next. And that's huge because hardware changes fast, platforms don't. You should also know that Android XR is built to work with existing Android tools and workflows. That lowers friction for developers. More developers means more useful apps. More useful apps means more reasons for people to actually wear these glasses. And this is where Aura becomes bigger than itself. It's a reference point, a starting line. Google is showing what's possible and letting the ecosystem run with it. And honestly, that's how categories get taken over. Not with one perfect product, but with a system that keeps improving without you noticing. Gemini is what finally makes smart glasses make sense. Now let's get to the part that changes everything. AI. Smart glasses failed before because they were dumb. Not stupid, but limited. They showed information, but they didn't understand context. They reacted, but they didn't assist. Gemini flips that. With Gemini built into the Android XR stack, glasses can understand what you're looking at, where you are, and what you're trying to do. And that unlocks real value. Live translation that actually feels natural. Directions that appear when you need them, and not constantly. You get contextual help without pulling out your phone every 30 seconds. This thing is always available, always listening when you ask, and always ready to help in small moments. And that's the key. You should also know that voice plays a massive role here. Talking is faster than tapping, especially when your hands are busy. Gemini turns glasses into something closer to a quiet assistant than a gadget screaming for attention. And that's why this works now and didn't before. The hardware caught up, yes, but more importantly, the intelligence did. And once AI becomes ambient instead of reactive, glasses stop feeling optional and start feeling obvious. How Google's approach stacks up against Apple and Meta. Now this is where things get interesting, because Google isn't trying to beat Apple or Meta at their own game. They're playing a completely different one. Meta's smart glasses lean hard into lifestyle and content capture. Cameras first, social sharing, always on recording vibes. They're fun, but they're very outward facing. They want you documenting life. Apple, on the other hand, treats this space like premium spatial computing. Polished, controlled, deeply integrated, very powerful, but also very intentional about where and how it fits into your life. It's less about casual use and more about high-end experiences. Google's angle is quieter and honestly, sneakier. Project Aura is built around utility and scale. Not vibes, not luxury, just usefulness. The goal isn't to impress you in a demo, it's to help you in moments where pulling out your phone feels annoying. And here's the real difference. Google doesn't need Aura to be the only successful pair of glasses. They need Android XR to be everywhere. Multiple brands, multiple designs, same core platform. That's how Android won phones. Not by being flashy, but by being everywhere. You should also know this approach lowers risk. If one design doesn't land, the platform still survives. If one partner stumbles, others can step in. That flexibility is something closed systems don't have. And that's why Aura feels less like a product launch and more like Google quietly setting the rules of the game. The trust problem Google has to get right this time. Now here's the part nobody likes talking about, but everybody feels. Trust. Smart glasses didn't just fail because of tech limits. They failed because people didn't feel comfortable around them. Cameras on faces make people nervous. Always on sensors raise eyebrows. And once that discomfort sets in, adoption dies fast. You've seen it happen before. You should also know this isn't just about privacy policies or indicators. It's about vibes. If people think they're being watched, even when they're not, the product is already in trouble. And this thing is where Project Aura takes a noticeably different approach. Aura isn't built around recording first. It's built around assistance first. The design is quieter. The experience is meant to feel passive unless you actively engage with it. No big visual cues screaming, hey, I'm filming you. No main character energy. Just glasses doing their job and getting out of the way. 
And that matters more than most people realize. Because the moment smart glasses blend into normal social behavior, resistance drops, people stop reacting to the hardware and start accepting the function. That's when wearables cross the line from novelty to normal. Google also isn't pushing Aura as a lifestyle flex. It's not framed as something you wear to show off. It's framed as something that helps you navigate the world, literally and socially. And honestly, that's the lesson Google seems to have learned. You don't win trust by promising more features. You win it by making the tech feel boring, predictable, and respectful. If Aura gets that balance right, smart glasses stop feeling intrusive and start feeling invisible. And that's exactly where they need to be to actually succeed. What the timeline really tells us about Google's intentions. Now let's talk about timing because this part says more than any feature list ever could. Google isn't rushing this out, and that's not hesitation, that's restraint. Project Aura is being positioned as a foundation first. Developers get time to build. Hardware partners get time to refine designs. The platform gets time to mature before regular people ever have to think about it. You should also know this pacing lines up with how Google has rolled out major platforms before. Android didn't explode overnight, neither did Wear OS or Android Auto. They grew quietly, iteration by iteration, until they were just there. And that's the strategy here. Instead of shipping something half-baked and asking people to change their habits, Google is waiting until smart glasses naturally fit into daily life. No forcing it, no hype-driven pressure, just steady groundwork. And this thing is important. Because when glasses finally feel normal, useful, and easy, adoption doesn't feel like a decision. It feels obvious. That's the long game Project Aura is playing. And if Google gets this right, smart glasses won't feel like the future anymore. They'll just feel like another thing you put on without thinking about it. And that's usually how the biggest tech shifts actually happen. And that's it for today. I hope this video gave you a clear picture of what Google's Project Aura is really about and why it matters for the future of smart glasses. If you want to check out the smart glasses and related devices that are actually available right now, I've dropped everything you need in the description. And if this helped even a little, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. And if you like this video, YouTube thinks you'll like this one next. Thanks for watching.